right, well, we'll be in Malachi chapter number one tonight, if you want to turn there. Um, while I'm, I guess, telling a little about us and where we're at right now, um, we feel like the Lord's calling us into full-time ministry, so we are planning on trying to equip ourselves to be able to um, complete His um, will for us. Um, all right, now we're planning on going down in to, in January, which we're hoping to be probably the second week of January, and head down to Florida to attend the Deland School of the Bible down in Deland, Florida, um, at Bible Baptist Church there. Um, it's kind of crazy, you know, how things happen with, you know, I'd say eight months ago, you know, never think about where we'd be now and, you know, how many doors the, Lord, the Lord's opened to this point and it just keeps happening and keeps happening and you know we we started off this past summer we went to teen camp and we um just had a nice week to just relax and just focus on the lord and focus on um some things that the lord would have us to do and we realized that you know through life you get busy you work you come home you have work to do when you get home <laughs> um there's a lot of distractions, so it was nice to have a week to just uh, pray and to think about the Lord's direction, and we decided that <coughs> the, the Lord was calling us into full-time ministry, and in that um, decision, the, the craziest thing about it was just the peace that we had after we made that commitment, and, you know, over the years after I got saved when I was 16, you know, uh, there's been many times throughout my Christian life that I felt the Lord's leading me to to do more, to, um, you know, serve him more, and there was always that fear of what would come from that, and the peace that came after we made that decision was just amazing, and partially what I'm going to be preaching tonight is um, what led me to this decision of just giving God our all in all that we do and um, all that we have in this life. <clears throat> so we are definitely, um, you know, in need of your prayers just to help us to uh, make the right decisions, to um, just prepare the way for us. We um, have gotten so many of our needs met uh, with um, putting our house and having it sold within two days of having it on the market and being able, the Lord's been able to provide for us uh, a way to be able to go down and do what he's called us to do. And, you know, that's what pastor says. If, if we're called, he's going to equip, he's going to uh, make sure that we're able to do what he's called us to do. <clears throat> he won't uh, call you to something and just leave you hanging out to dry. He's going to provide a way for you. He's going to take care of you. He's going to meet all your needs. Right. And all you got to do is say yes, and all you got to do is trust him. So let me get my stuff out here. <clears throat> so Malachi, chapter number one tonight. We'll be starting off in verse six. <clears throat> So we're here in the last book of the Old Testament, and in Malachi we see the nation of Israel starting to fall away from God. The temple had been rebuilt, and proper worship had been reinstituted, but just like many times in the Old Testament, they began to get, be complacent in their worship. And just like many times in the Old Testament, uh, the nation of Israel began to fall away, many times we do as well. Um, so it's a good um, mirror of our lives and a good uh remembrance of where we are and how we can continue to follow him. <clears throat> this is where we pick up here in Malachi chapter 1 and verse 6. <clears throat> now we understand that the Old Testament is uh, written to the nation of Israel. Uh, they were under the law. We are not under the law. We are uh, under grace. And so we understand that it, everything in the Old Testament is not written to us, but it's written for us. So we have principles that we can learn and we can gain from it to help us in our, our lives today. <clears throat> so I begin reading here in Malachi chapter 1, verse 6. Um, we'll go down through verse 10. <clears throat> a son honoreth his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Saith the Lord of hosts unto you, 
O priest that despised my name. And ye say, Wherein have we despised thy name? Ye offer polluted bread upon mine altar, and ye say, Wherein have we polluted thee? In that we say, The table of the Lord, in that ye say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. And if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee, or accept thy person, saith the Lord of hosts? And now, I pray you, beseech God, that he will be gracious unto us. This hath been by your means. Will he regard your persons, saith the Lord of hosts? Who is there even among you that would shut the door for not? Neither do ye kindle fire on mine altar for not. I have no pleasure in you, saith the Lord of hosts, neither will I accept an offering at your hand. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for the many um, lessons we can learn from it, Lord. I pray you just help us uh, to trust you, help us to put you first in our lives. Um, Lord, I pray that you would uh, hide me behind the cross. I pray that you would um, help me to rightly divide the word of truth, that um, it will be helpful to your people, um, and I pray that you just bless this time we have, in Jesus' name, amen. So we're starting here in verse, back to verse number six at the beginning. Uh, we see here uh, that God, uh, through the prophet Malachi, calls out the priest on their worship. <clears throat> so we see here, uh, it says, why, he said, uh, saith, uh, to do, I'll go ahead and start uh, in the beginning of verse six. A son honoreth his father. And a servant honoreth his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I, and if I be a master, where is my fear? <clears throat> so he calls out that their lack of um, leading in their life, to their lack of reverence to him because of the offerings that they are submitting to him. <clears throat> they're, they're not up to God's standard. <clears throat> it says... Um, saith the Lord of hosts unto you, O priest, despise my name. And ye say, wherein have we despised thy name? So he, they ask him, they say, where have we despised thy name? <clears throat> and he answers here in verse 7. Ye offer, offer polluted bread upon mine altar. And ye say, wherein have we polluted thee? <clears throat> and in that we, ye say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. God tells the priest exactly where they had went wrong. The priest had the mindset, uh, the priest's mindset have changed from their very best to good enough. <clears throat> so they had basically got to a point where God told them uh, in the Old Testament, which we'll go to here in a little bit, uh, what the standard was. And they had defaulted or fallen away from that standard. While they were still doing it, they weren't doing it up to the standard that God set. <clears throat> and that's where he says, um, in that, in doing that, it says the table of the Lord is contemptible, <clears throat> meaning it's, they, in their mind it was good enough for him. <laughs> Verse 8, and if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now to thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee or accept thy person, saith the Lord of hosts? So this is what we're kind of getting into, the, the sacrifice that they were sacrificing they were often blind or lame or sick. They weren't the best that the nation of Israel had to offer. They were allowing these sacrifices to be sacrificed to God because they had lost that urgency, that place where God um, ultimately belongs. <clears throat> so we'll turn back to Leviticus chapter 22 and read uh, the Old Testament law that was given uh, to Moses and the nation of Israel. Uh, about the offering and what they were to do and how they were to uh, conduct it. <clears throat> so we see here the Lord is speaking to Moses and the nation of Israel, and we'll be in Leviticus 22, uh, starting up here in uh, verse number 17. <clears throat> Leviticus 22, verse 17. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, 
speak unto Aaron and to, and to his sons and unto all the children of Israel and say unto them, whatsoever he be of the house of Israel or of the strangers in Israel that will offer an obligation for his vows and for all his freewill offerings, which they will offer unto the Lord for a burnt offering. Verse number 19. Ye shall offer at your own will a male without blemish of the beeves of the sheep or of the goats. <clears throat> so we see here uh, who he's addressing is the nation of Israel and um, what type of offering this was to be for. <clears throat> then he goes into the spe specifically how and what they should offer. They should offer a male without blemish of beeves of sheep and of goats. <clears throat> so the standard was to offer an animal, a male without blemish. And further on it says, but whatsoever hath a blemish, that hath a blemish, that shall not offer for it shall not be acceptable for you. So he says he wants the male without blemish, and if you tried to offer the male without with blemish, it would not be accepted. <clears throat> Verse 21, and he goes on, and it says, And whosoever offer, offereth a sacrifice of peace offering unto the Lord to accomplish his vow or a freewill offering in the bees or sheep, it shall be perfect to be accepted. There shall no blemish uh, there shall be no blemish therein <clears throat> verse 22 uh, blind or broken or maimed or having uh, uh, having of when or scurvy or scabbed ye shall not offer these unto the Lord nor make an offering by fire of them upon the altar of the Lord <clears throat> so we see his command uh, here uh, to in the law of the Old Testament was so that the nation of Israel had to offer the best that they had. Now, God didn't really care what, you know, the specific animal um, that it was the best. He didn't really care that it had to be the best. The reason he wanted them to offer their best is because he wanted them to sacrifice their all. He wanted the nation of Israel to put the, the best that they had to give the best that they had to God. <clears throat> we see, you know, through the Old Testament, they become legalistic in where they're doing it out of, out of duty, out of obligation. <clears throat> but that was never the purpose for the law. The law was meant so that they would um, sacrifice their best because they loved God, not because that was just what they had to do. <clears throat> so we'll turn back here to um, Malachi. So we see the Old Testament law was for them to give their the best their um, animals with no blemish, and that was what it was acceptable for the payment of their sins. <clears throat> um, verse number nine. We'll pick it back up here. <clears throat> so we see that God wants the best and nothing less <clears throat> now back now malachi chapter 9 says and now i pray you beseech beseech god that he will be gracious unto us this hath been by your means will he regard your persons saith the lord of hosts <clears throat> so the prophet urged them to repent of their sins so that god might or so that god's wrath might be averted <clears throat> He knew that what they were doing was wrong. He knew that what they were doing wasn't good enough, and God wasn't going to put. God wasn't going to have it. <clears throat> Verse ten: Who is there even among you that would shut the doors? Uh, this is how uh, how bad and how upset it would make. It makes God. It says, "Who is there even among you that would shut the doors for naught? Neither do ye kindle fire on mine altar for naught." I have no pleasure in you, saith the Lord of hosts, neither will I accept an offering at your hand. <clears throat> so the offering here that they were offering wasn't their best, and God didn't want it. God didn't want their, their second best, their third best, their um, little mangy goat they had running around to just get rid of it. That's not what God wants. <clears throat> and similar, that's not what he wants for our lives. God doesn't want, you know, uh, what we have left over after we go to work, after we go home and 
uh, do our jobs. He doesn't want just whatever's left. <clears throat> um, he tells us what he wants here in Romans. If you're going to turn to Romans chapter 12. <clears throat> Pretty familiar setting. Uh, Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. God tells us what he wants from us. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye may present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. <clears throat> the Lord wants us to be a living sacrifice because he had died on the cross for our sins so that we may live sacrificial lives. <clears throat> the Lord gave his life so that we may live. <clears throat> he says that is our reasonable service. We as Christians, we do sacrifice. We, um, but so were the priests in the Old Testament. They were still sacrificing, but they weren't sacrificing their best. We as Christians, we um, sacrificed our time to come to church, right? We're here on a Sunday night. That's awesome. That's great. That's, that's amazing. <clears throat> we may help out with food pantry. We may go out witnessing and pass out tracts. We may teach a Sunday school, and we may give tithes to the church. And we may give to missions. You know, part of what got me with this when I was going over it, uh, we taught it in Sunday school. Um, this was the Sunday that we decided to go to, into full-time ministry. Was, you know, we are doing, we're sacrificing for God. We're, we're putting, you know, we're, we teach Sunday school, you know. We, we go with the teens to camp and doing all these things, right? But... Was God still really getting our best? Was, were we really still giving God the best we had to offer? And with that question, we decided that no, we weren't giving God the best that we had to offer. Um, you know, even though we were still, you know, trying to do um, what he wanted us to do and do things around the church, it wasn't our very best. And that's what God wants. God wants our very best. And he deserves it. And he deserves it. <clears throat> But we are truly, you know, um, with, you know, I can stand up here and say, hey, you know, we're going to Bible College down in Florida and, you know, look at us. But, you know, the thing about a living sacrifice is you can always crawl off that altar on your own. Um, so that's always the daily struggle is always continuing to crawl back on that altar and lay there and and let God um, work through you. Put God first. Sacrifice the best you have every day. To keep that um, purpose, to keep that mindset, to keep that, that will that you're just going to continue every day to put God first, to try to do the best you can, to try to give God the, the best sacrifice you can. <clears throat> You know, God deserves all that we have. He has given us so many blessings. He's given us his son to die on the cross for us to save us from our sins so that we don't have to go to hell, that we can live forever with him uh, in eternity in heaven. Um, what more can he do for us that would be worth us to give him our lives? And, you know, not saying everybody's called to be a pastor, called to be a preacher or anything like that, but we're all called to give God our best. And whatever that is, um, it may be different for some people. Uh, some people's best may be uh, in other people's eyes lower, but to God, all he cares about is the best. If, if you're coming to church, you're, being, you're attending, you're, you're going out and witnessing, and that's the best that God has for you, then that's what your best is. Um, that's all you can do. You, you do your best. You give God the best that you have to offer, and you never know what's going to come of it. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of in this position to we're committed to, to serving him. I don't know what's going to come of it. I don't know where we're going to be in four years after Bible college. I don't know um, what the future holds, but I pray that the Lord will help me to continue to put him first in our lives and to 
offer our best sacrifice to him. And who knows where that's going to go. And my prayer is that everybody here will do the same thing. They will realize what they're, where they're at with God and if they are giving their best. And, you know, even though, yeah, we're going to Bible college, I can still give him more. I can still do more. I can still uh, sacrifice more. Um, so I just pray that everybody would evaluate their lives and just look and see where they can do better, where they can give more to God, and where we can make our ultimate sacrifice. Right. Go ahead and pray.